Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. I'm here with my friend Sarah today. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Super was, exciting. I'm excited about this. And I'll tell you, um, prior to the interview, you and I had spent some time chatting, but I actually talked to, I guess, three other people in your industry okay. just saying, hey, tell me about Sarah so <laughs> I can throw some, you know, questions at her. Okay. Um, and I just thought it was beautiful because all three of them were so complimentary of not just you in the industry, but you as a person. Oh. And um, one of them specifically said, Wendy specifically said, she does everything for the right reason, which I thought was a really tremendous compliment. So that is a tremendous compliment. Yeah. And it is because it's true, because we do what's right, whether anyone's looking or not. Yeah. And I think that's a good way to live your life personally. So so I thought it would be really cool if we started out by talking about your journey into real estate, because you have a really interesting story. Okay. And I, with our, with our listeners, we have a lot of women that are aspiring to six figures. Mm -hmm. And then we have like our cohort that's in that category and they like to listen to these. But, um, I think your story to how you got there would be really, really just cool for okay. some younger women to hear. So I'll start at the beginning though. Okay. Yeah. That would be great. So <laughs> when I was a young person, I had my son, this is 21 years ago. And I jokingly say I was so poor, I couldn't afford the extra O. I was Pope. And <laughs> I lived in a terrible studio basement apartment in New Mexico. And I quickly realized that um, I was going to be, I was going to have to become the breadwinner because my son's father was not, he was very focused on finishing his degree and was not really going to be contributing. So I took myself out of art school and I put myself into trade school and I learned how to type. And back in those days, the more you typed doing medical transcription, the more money you made. It's volume business. So I took over the second company that I ever worked for. And at the height of that career, I had 140 contractors, all women like me. Well, I had one man. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful thing because we worked when our kids would sleep. We would work when the kids were at school. We just worked all the time. And one of my favorite parts about that profession was I got to teach women and men how to do more and how to do it faster. Mm -hmm. So by creating different codes in your computer and things like that. So that industry about 2005 started drastically changing um, where the technology. So now when you go to the doctor's office, the doctors, they just type it all in. That didn't exist back then, but it was rapidly changing into that process. And I realized I needed to do something different. So in 2008, I was really not happy. I'd lived in New Mexico, I lived in Albuquerque, and I wanted my son to be closer to a strong male role model. So my dad had moved up here to Boise, and so I followed my dad. And he has a super fun story too. Um, so I moved up here to Boise and I knew two people, and I flew up here for two weeks and I was determined to find a house. And I fired two realtors during that time, because I have a little type A personality in me. And um, <laughs> so I actually wound up renting a duplex here. And then the following year, about 2009, I started my hunt again. I fired my third realtor. And then my fourth realtor, she kind of self got fired because she um, had her license removed. And so I thought to myself at that time, how could you be so bad at your only job? And it's, I mean, you're showing homes. It, it, it is, there is a lot of complexity when it comes to real estate. Um, but for me at the time, it was my first home. And I just, like, how could you be that bad? So then my then boyfriend, now husband, um, he had gone through his, I want to say his 15th realtor. And this is 2008, nine. And so there are homes as far as the eye can see. It's a very different market than what it is today. Mm -hmm. Um and he was so frustrated because he was trying to flip and the market was going down. And so we sat down because we both love real estate and I didn't know how much I loved it until I became a realtor. And I became his agent. 
And so that was how I got started in the business. And I sold 26 homes my first year. They were all under $100,000 and not just like 99, that, no, like my first home I sold was 65,000. And then my favorite home that I ever sold during that time, the list price was 89,000 and we stole it for 51.5. And it was a four bed, two bath, uh, two car garage on a quarter acre. People are saying, where, where can I go right. do that now? It like, does, please. It does, it does not exist. <laughs> yeah. It does not exist. So uh, over the course of that, I was really driven to want to be the best myself and really understand structurally, like, what are the components of a house? And think of, I think of houses as almost like a science project. So knowing the ins and outs of the construction part of it, mm -hmm. as well as the ins and the outs of the contract. The other thing that started happening is a lot of people started asking me, well, what, what is this? What do you think about this? And would bounce ideas off. And it's really fun. There are so many different ways to do real estate that it's always fun to just bounce ideas off of each other. Um, the other thing that I found is that I, I started teaching courses through Keller Williams. So I got my master faculty certificate. Um, so I teach other agents how to agent mm -hmm. because not all agents run their business like a business. Not all agents pay their taxes. And those things are critical and crucial in our industry. And a lot of agents make really interesting decisions, mm -hmm. like buying Porsches when they're leasing a house. And it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So when we're helping our clients do what I call financial surgery, I think it's really important that we in and of ourselves are very solid people because we're advising people on the largest financial and largest emotional purchase that they'll ever make. So Yeah, and I always tell people, you can't teach something that you don't practice no, exactly so it's really interesting to me when people are trying to teach someone else and i'm like okay but you haven't even done it right yeah right right yeah so i find it fascinating right now there are more realtors than ever in our treasure valley and mm -hmm. because it looks like it's easy mm -hmm. and actually it's one of the most challenging times in real estate right now because our inventory is so low mm -hmm. i think my last search of ada county there were 300 and some odd active available homes for sale mm -hmm. and there are currently 10,000 realtors in the treasure valley so let's talk a little bit about that because you're not you actually are now president elect Correct. So talk a little bit about that because your your career path has obviously just gone on these steps up and up. So talk a little bit about going into that position and why. Why did you choose to take it on? Because it's a lot of a it's, it's a very big time commitment. Right. Yeah. So in wanting to give back, not only teaching at my brokerage, um, I wanted to be able to help other people. In my opinion, we although we have very low inventory. There are so many houses. I, it's it to me. It's not competition. It's collaboration. It's how can we all do better? How can we all level up our profession? And so I joined Women's Council of Realtors. Gosh, year years ago, and I started out on the membership committee. And I really was wondering, like, why am I hanging out with a bunch of other realtors? Like, what am I doing? Like, I'm busy. I'm a high producer. Why am I here? And I kept going back to. I want to help us all do more because mm -hmm. if we can all do more in our community, what a great community do we have? Mm -hmm. So I was the 2020 local president for uh, Boise Metro. And then I ran for president elect for 2021 for Women's Council of Realtors. So in 2021, I will be our Idaho State Women's Council of Realtors president. I choose to do this as well. I'm also currently in the Leadership Institute for Women's Council of Realtors because we have a voice as women. We are, Our challenges that we face as women who are in the workforce are different than that of our male counterpart. And we. I know it's, people are like, it's 2020, women are heard. Like, yes, we are heard and we still need to be continued to be heard. Mm -hmm. And there's a definite point for that. Um, the other thing that I'm doing with Women's Council of Realtors is I've created a Fair Housing and Diversity Committee, which we don't have here in the state of Idaho. And somebody actually asked me, they're like, you as a white Christian woman, how are, <laughs> like, how are you talking about fair housing and diversity? And my answer to that is, well, why not me, mm -hmm. for one? And for two, our landscape of, of our people is drastically changing as Idaho is found. And so the conversations that we've had over the last many, many years in Idaho and how business is done is very different now. It's changing. And we need to be aware 
of we just need to be aware. And when it comes down to it, it's all about fair housing. Everyone, every single human on the earth needs housing, whether they're renting it or whether they're purchasing it. And the fair housing rules that we follow are in place for a reason, because we are not meant to discriminate against people. So that's what I got. So I'm going to switch gears and ask you a question that I ask all of my guests, mm -hmm. which is, do you remember when you hit six figures? And what does that, what did that feel like? If you do remember? I, I can frankly say I don't remember um, because I'm one of those people I work and I work, I put my head down and I work and I work and I work and I work and I come up for air and then I go back to work and I do it because I love my people. I will, I do remember when I wrote the check where I paid off my house mm -hmm. and that was really, <laughs> that cool. was really cool. That was really a cool feeling because I went and I, I, I still clear, clearly remember being in my basement apartment and making the decision for my son not for myself, because as, as a young adult, I was going to do whatever I was going to do. I was an artist. I was a free bird. I could do whatever I want. The instant I became a mother, I realized that I had to do better, not for me, for my son. And so I remembered clearly stating in my head, you are going to own your home. You are not going to be poor. You are not going to raise your son as someone who believes in, in the poor mentality. Mm -hmm. So that made you emotional. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to not cry right now because you don't want your masculine. I know. Room. I know. <laughs> no, I, everything I've ever done in my life was motivated by my son. Mm -hmm. So, all right, there's a tear. So, yeah. Isn't that interesting? Because I've asked so many women that question now. And a lot of women remember it or they had a goal for it. So they remember it very vividly. But there's been a few that have said, one of them in particular said, I, I think it was 46. She said, I just remember when um, it was 46,000. And it was because I had this in my head that if I made double my age or something like nice. that, like, I mean, so all of us have these, these right. things, right? That's a really cool one though. Cause paying off your house is not something that very many people do in life. No, no, it's, yeah. I, I, I worked very hard and my uh, husband and I were very committed because we both knew, like, we sell, we both sell real estate. Mm -hmm. It can be an up market, a down market. We need to make sure we are financially sound. Yeah. So. so what am I not asking you? We have, again, kind of two groups of listeners. Is there mm -hmm. anything that you think, oh, this would be a really good piece for someone to hear of your story or your journey in business? The biggest takeaway that I would want people to get uh, if if anything comes about is what it all comes down to is making a decision. We make decisions every single day. Some are really good decisions and some are really bad decisions and some are kind of benign decisions mm -hmm. and they're still decisions. So make a decision on what you want and be able to pivot and shift. The other thing that I will say is be very aware of your mindset. Mindset is such a huge part of life. And it's also not only your mindset, but the mindset of people around you. So if you're hanging around with a bunch of people who are like negative and all oh, life sucks and it's hard or, you know, you can't do it, you might consider changing your friend group. I know when I moved here to, Bo to Boise, I literally chose to be happy. And I went about doing things very differently from what I had always done, including the man who I was dating at the time. I met him about two weeks after I moved here, completely different from anyone who I'd ever known. And so it was, I made a, a choice to change that. And I gave myself a mindset of abundance. So that's what I would say. So last question, do you listen to podcasts? Do you read books? Both? Is there one or two that you would recommend? Oh, as long as it's good for your brain and it is further educating you, absolutely. I, I believe you should do it. Um, I love to read. Um, I don't have a lot of time to read. So if I can find a book on tape and a book in mm -hmm. person, I will listen to it at three times speed because it somehow gets in my brain better. Um, but any amount of brain food that helps you be a better human in whatever industry you are, absolutely do. So yeah. And I do love podcasts. Is there any book you would recommend? Is there one that sticks out that has impacted you over the years? My favorite one? 
super easy read. I read it at an open house, at a really boring open house back at the bottom of the market. Um, so I read it in about an hour. It's called The Compound Effect. Mm -hmm. And it's about how those very small changes lead to incremental wins. So that's yeah. one of my favorites. That's a, that's a good one. It is. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your time today. I thank you for you having me. Insane schedule. So. Yes. I was lucky to get on it. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you again for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.